The previous exercise was very simple, but it had a clear goal. I wanted to make all of those four attributes very intuitive for you. So, for insertion of the dimension line, we need the view, the points which will be dimensioned, the location of the line, and not obligatory, the attributes. And now I would like to make it a little more automatic, let's say. I have the view, and there are some hollow core slabs, plenty of them. And let's, at first, get the objects which are currently on this view. So, as you remember, we have the view in this place, and we can query for the objects from view. Let's do it. Okay, so at this moment, we asked the Tecla, hey Tecla, what is exactly visible in this view? And the result are two different data sets. The lowest one is the list of the type of objects which are currently visible. So we have some grid, some part, and uh, the dimension sets. On the top, in the intersection of the drawing objects, we have the tree when every branch um, corresponds to the key of those uh, mapping. So I would like to get all of those parts, because I want to dimension those hollow core slabs. So, of course, at this point I would like to get the first uh, branch of this tree, but maybe for a different view it will be not uh, as uh, straight. So let's make it a little more uh, foolproof. So I will get the member index from this set. And by the, by the member, I will specify the part. So I just want to get uh, the, the index, which in this example will be equal to 1. But of course, for more problem, problematic, more complicated maybe views, when there will be a, very, a lot of different type of drawing objects, the part will be not at the first place. It is, you know, you should not assume that it will be all, all, always the first. So, now I know that uh, I have to get the first branch. And, of course, there are a lot of different ways how you could get uh, this, this, but I will try to use this uh, tree branch, tree branch, I'm trying to find it, yeah, here it is, tree branch, okay. So, we have the tree, and I have to specify the path. And, of course, the path for this is uh, zero, oh, yep, here it is. So it would be by hard coding it. But uh, we should not hard code this this way, so I have to somehow specify the path of this tree. Of course, there is plenty of, of ways how it can be done. I will use just the simple concatenation. So let's grab the index and what is needed. Okay, this is needed. Sorry for a mess, but I think that you get the point what I am trying to do. So I want just to merge some uh, row strings to get the path. Okay, and by doing it, I will be quite, uh, I will be less vulnerable to, to changes. So let's make it something like that. Okay, and why I would I needed it? Because now I have all of those eleven uh, hollow core slabs in this view, and those parts they are the drawing objects. So, the, by the drawing object, I mean something which uh, can be changed, its, its appearance, its visibility, its settings can be changed how it is looked on the drawing. But the drawing object, the drawing part, doesn't hold the geometry. It doesn't hold the start, end point, and every things which you would like to dimension. So, I have to map between the drawing objects to the model objects, and it can be done with this component. So I have to model uh, to map drawing to model object. And by doing it, I will get after it uh, a list of beams. So yeah, I get those uh, eleven beams from the model. And what is the most interesting uh, manipulation of this beam can be done by the by the by the official link from Sebastian. So you can tweak and merge different. Uh, version of uh, the Clagroscoper connection. But uh, for now, for the, for, for, for the sake of this uh, example, 
let's grab uh, maybe maybe start points of those beams it is not a very uh, live example but you know examples are to show you some possibilities to show you some components how they can be used so in the geometry tab i can get uh, something which is named what is named part lines let's try what it what it helps okay so now I am ready to get the reference line. So the, refer the reference line is a line from the yellow to purple uh, dimension, and also I can get the center line. And of course, uh, by looking in this, I, I cannot see the difference, but if I use the uh, standard grasshopper component to you know uh, show it in Rhino, and I will try to show Rhino, yeah, here it is. Maybe not very informative, but okay. So you have to imagine that those uh, 22 lines are coming from the hollow cores. And let's see how it is. So the top one, the reference lines, are the lines coming from the connection of the yellow and purple uh, endpoints. So those points which you are modeling, which you are using in the, in the model. The center line is the center of gravity. So we can see that they are uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle plane of those slabs. Okay, why I need it? Uh, because now I would like to get uh, only uh, start points from those hollow core slabs. So I think that there is some endpoints. Yeah, there is some endpoints. And if I specify the curve, then I will get uh, only the start or endpoints. And this is exactly what I wanted to do. And you can ask why, because now if we look a little back, sorry for this uh, ugly spaghetti, but uh, I want just to connect the start points of the hollow cores to make the dimensional line between them. And of course, no one is dimension that dimensioning uh, hollow core slabs to the start, the club points, but just to get you a little more advanced. So I still use the same dimensional line component, but I specify a little differently the points which should be dimensioned. And here lies the essence of the dimensioning. You have to somehow figure out the exact location of the points which you would like to get. So for this very simple example, I get the start point uh, of, the, of the model objects. But I think that in the next example, we will do something more uh, which you know from the real life. So please stay tuned and let's get uh, a little more how it will evolve.